Hello, class. Calvin Coolidge was the only president to be born on the 4th of July. Calvin Coolidge was born on July 4th, 1872. As of now, he is the only president to be born on the 4th of July, though there have been three presidents that have died on the 4th of July. He will die on January 5th, 1933, at age 60. His home state is Massachusetts. This is where he is going to get his start in politics, in the state politics of Massachusetts. By matter of religion, he was a Congregationalist. So, uh, for his family, uh, Calvin Coolidge is born John Calvin Coolidge Jr. because his father was John Calvin Coolidge Sr. Um, and his father is a justice of the peace in Vermont. A uh, two separate occasions. A uh, for twenty years in the late eighteen hundreds, and then after a sixteen-year gap, he becomes one again. So we'll loop back around to this. But when Calvin Coolidge suddenly ascends the presidency and needs to have the oath of office administered. It's done by his father. Okay, so Calvin Coolidge's wife and first lady was named Grace. And they had two sons, okay? And named John and Calvin. Um, and Calvin Jr. is going to die while Calvin Coolidge is president. Um, he's going to be playing on the tennis court, the White House, barefoot. It's going to be hot. It's going to end up blistering his foot. And that's going to end up resulting in him getting sepsis and dying at age 16. So very tragic element there. For a matter of political party, Calvin Coolidge was a Republican. So his term in office is on August 3rd. 1923 to August 4th, 1929. You may be able to tell just by that date that he is becoming president in a regular way. And that is because he was the vice president for Warren G. Harding. Warren G. Harding has a heart attack and dies, thrusting Calvin Coolidge into the presidency. Um, and at that time, there's no way to replace your vice president without another presidential election. So that position just vacant for a while, but eventually it's, um, it is filled with a guy called Charles Dawes. And Charles Dawes uh, writes some music. It's not what he was mainly known for, but one of the things that he wrote was later reappropriated in the 1950s by a musician and they won a Grammy for it. And the now deceased Charles Dawes um, still gets credit for that Grammy. All right. So if we're looking at the political career of Calvin Coolidge, okay, he starts as the mayor of Northampton in Massachusetts. Okay, he spends time in the Massachusetts Senate ends up being the head of the Massachusetts Senate. Then he is elected Lieutenant Governor of Massachusetts. In 1919, he is elected Governor of Massachusetts. Okay, he's in that first term. He's in a two-year term uh, when he is picked by Warren Harding to be his running mate, and they won the 1920 presidential election by a landslide. And so he's there. 1923, Warren Harding dies. Calvin Coolidge is not even in Washington. He's out visiting his family and when the news arrives to him. And as I said before, his father was a justice of the peace. Um, he actually became justice of the peace again after a hiatus in 1916. So, um, and he's able to administer the oath of office, so Calvin Coolidge becomes president. And he's somewhat of an unlikely president. And that is because he was very well known for being silent, for saying the smallest amount of words necessary, 
He's not a bombastic politician. So there's uh, a couple of variations on the story, but there is a story about a woman that bet they could force Calvin Coolidge to say three words. Okay, and then there's a moment of silence, and then Calvin Coolidge says, you lose, and walks away, right? Only two words. There's some variations on that uh, story, but it's emblematic of what he was known for. You call him Silent Cal. Uh, within his presidency, he continued the policies, uh, very pro-business of Warren Harding that will also be occurring into the presidency of Herbert Hoover, um, some of which are going to set the stage for the Great Depression. Another thing he's going to sign in 1924 is the Indian Citizenship Act, which is what allows Native Americans to broadly become U.S. citizens and start voting in elections. So he gets reelected in 1924. He decides not to run in 1928. He is succeeded by his Secretary of Commerce, Her Herbert Hoover. During Herbert Hoover's term, the Great Depression happens, the economy goes to ruin. So, in 1932, at the Republican Convention, there is the draft Calvin Coolidge movement that is trying to draft the former president back into the position, getting rid of Hoover. And this ultimately doesn't go anywhere, and that's probably for the best, because he died January 5th, 1933. So that would have been before he would have been able to be sworn back in as president. But, you know, relatively close to a Grover Cleveland type situation here with Calvin Coolidge. So Calvin Coolidge didn't really live long enough to see what his legacy uh, was. Um, the Great Depression was still very much there. So next time uh, we'll talk about Herbert Hoover.